so welcome to the session. Uh, there's nothing on the screen, guys. OK, <laughs> once again, welcome to the session, Fast and Secure with Joomla Websites. And once upon a time, a really smart guy said, security and performance are the main factors of a Joomla website. Uh, but wait, it was not Albert Einstein. <laughs> fake news, fake news. It was me. And I said it, uh, yeah, I, to say, I know. So I said it uh, some years ago at the Joomla Day Germany. I did the same, a similar talk. And you see how crowded it was. It was really full. The room was full, and the people kept coming and coming. And this showed me that uh, the people want to learn. They want to know. They want to see. And they want to understand how it works and how, what they can do to improve security and uh, performance. And I think for me, it's really important. And they are really crucial to, to have success in, uh, online. And if you don't pay attention to these points, to these factors, uh, you won't be successful. And um, also what, unfortunately, um, a lot of users don't take these factors uh, as, uh, or they take it as granted, so they don't pay attention to it. So I think it's also our, it's also, we need to teach the, the people. So if, you, if you're creating websites for customers or your agency, you have to teach the, your customers that they pay attention to it. And so over the years, I collected a lot of do's and don'ts. And uh, today, I want to present you some basics. So to start, uh, what, you, what you can do to get easily results. And so we won't talk about uh, SQL injections when it comes to security or no attack vectors or something, or code. You won't see any code lines. So this is not a, talk, a technical talk at all. And so do we have uh, not many time, uh, no, not a lot of time. So time constraints, where uh, the, these topics alone are very big. And all, all the separated under, under point, other points, bullet points, uh, could, could fill full sessions. So I have to go really quickly through all the points to, all the, to my list. And if you have further questions, I'm also I'm here the whole, the whole conference during the whole time. And we have a booth there outside. And you can just come by, and we can talk about specific topics that, or problems that you have. And I can help you with them. So and, uh, let's start. First, security. So what does security mean? What, why security is so important, and we and, uh, developed a three-layer lay approach to make it easy to understand what, what you can do to improve the security on your website. So in the security, I think to understand security is quite easy, so you don't want to have uh, people in your house or strangers in your house. This is the same with a website and with your system, with the, with the server. You don't want to have people uh, that have no permission rights to, to access your system and, and misuse it for sending sp spam emails um, to to, to, down, uh, to upload Trojans or shell scripts or to redirect your website to, a, to, to a illegal websites. So this is what, what we don't want to. And um, if you have a security issue, uh, then somebody already has access. And this is what we don't we want to, to, to avoid. And um, as you should know, core code is never bug free so, or flawless. So in, in, in every code, there, is some, there are some bugs or some security issues. What is secure today can be, can, uh, will, can be broken or unsecured tomorrow. So security is also an ongoing task. It's not a fire and forget. So it's very important um, that uh, you, you be aware that you always have to keep an eye on security and don't take it uh, as, as secure as, as the, the state will stay as, uh, as it is right now. So, and. The three-layer approach, um, uh, I think it's quite easy to understand. So we have uh, three, three layers. So it's the user level, it's the system itself, the application, so Joomla in this case, and the server where the application is running on. And when, if it comes to the first level, layer, the user, it's quite obvious what we have uh, in this layer is, of course, passwords. I think you, always, you read a lot. I, th I said it already a thousand times, use secure passwords. But still, I see a lot of people are using really, really weak, uh, six-digit long, uh, six characters long passwords. And this is very important. Use really strong passwords. They are, cannot be guessed easily and have some special characters. And the important thing or the cool thing is if you're using a password manager, you don't have to remember all those passwords. So you don't have to remember the long passwords. You just have to remember one single master password. It can be very long. I have a master password over 30 characters long. But I, once I remembered it, I, I know the, my password. And I don't know any passwords of my website. I don't know my SSH. I don't know anything. I don't even know my email passwords. I don't know them. Because they're really long, because I created them with a, with a password manager, with a password generator. And I don't, don't know them. 
So I just know my master password. With, with the master password, I can have access to all my passwords. And if you are, if you're not want, if you don't want to use an online service for your master password, uh, you can use also there are solutions for, with a local data, database, and you can use you have your database locally on your machine, and your uh, your passwords or your, your database is not shared uh, in the cloud in the server. So you you can even improve the security there. And if you're using a password manager, it's, of course, easily to have only once, use a password only once. So never use a password twice or in, on uh, other services. Uh, always, set, uh, always have uh, different passwords. And on the next slide, um, this is a kind of a new factor. Uh, so don't use admin or administrator or webmaster or root as, as a username. Um, of course, uh, as you don't, maybe you heard, so brute force attacks are not really efficiently, and uh, only very a small piece of percentage uh, is, is done by hacks are done by uh, brute force attacks. But still, it's, it's still a, a way to to hide the admin user. So maybe there's a security flow where the where the hacker need, needs to use this, uh, the name of the super user, and this is a good way to 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 if you if if the super user name cannot be uh, uh, cannot be seen uh, displayed uh, externally, so this is a good way to, to hide, uh, to, to mitigate such uh, security risk. And also, what I also often see, uh, the people are not separating accounts, so they use just one single super user account and for everything. So if you have, for instance, if you write blog articles and you just need front-end access, don't use your super account for this. Create a, a new user and just use this user, special user, for the front-end content update uh, mechanism. Uh, content update the processes or actions. So and use just a super user account only if you do maintenance tasks like uh, update or install extensions or backups or whatever. But don't use uh, the, the same user for small things like uh, update a module or update uh, the content of a module, I mean, or the, uh, an article. That's also very important. And another thing is uh, never share your password. So maybe you know I have uh, also a private uh, Joomla project, Kubik Rubik Joomla extensions, and I get a lot of emails from, from people who are using my software, my, my extensions, and uh, requesting, uh, asking for, for support, and they sent me uh, the user, super user passwords. And this is very, very bad. Never do this, and never do it uh, if, if you were not asked to, and if you have to do, uh, you should never send the super user credentials for your user, and never from your production site. So always create a, a subdomain, a copy of your website to remove all sensitive data, and just uh, limit it as much as possible, and just that, that the developer, the supporter can access and, and fix the, the problem. So this is very important. And um, the funny thing is, well, you know, we had the 3.5, I'm not sure, the notification plugin, 3.5, when it was introduced. And uh, suddenly I had, uh, I think I, get, I got over 10 or 15 emails with notification uh, that, that my website uh, has a new update and I should, should update it. But it was not my website, it was website when I once had access to the website three years ago and had to fix something. And I got all the emails uh, with, with a notification that my, my website is up outdated and it worked. So they never, uh, never removed my, my credential or my, my accounts so I could still log in with the super user in their accounts and do stuff that's crazy. So in general, we say in Germany, gesunden Menschenverstand verwenden. So use your common sense, don't be stupid. Second layer is the Joomla layer. So what do we have there? So I, I have Victor's golden rules, I call them. So there are two rules, very important rules. If you go out, remember the Victor's golden rules. You can tweet about it. Hashtag Victor's golden rules. I want to see something. Okay, first rule, create backups. Most important, create backups. You, you have to have backups every, every time. And also not outdated backups, really up-to-date backups. And it's important not to just create the backups. If you occasionally log into your super your backend, uh, you have to develop a backup strategy. So do backups on a regular base. And you don't have to do it manually. We have a lot of solutions out there that, where you can automate everything. Like uh, create, what I do is I create a backup weekly of, of the whole system, file system. 
and I create a daily backups of the database. So they are more important for me because I don't change a lot of things on the file system, but I change, uh, uh, we have forum entries or whatever, so I change more on the, in the database. So it's very important to have, it's even more important to have an up-to-date uh, backup of, a data, of the database than for, from the files. The files you have somewhere in, in all the backup that you can restore. Or if it's, it comes to extensions, you can download the newest version, but still you need the data from the database. That's very important. So develop a, uh, develop a strategy and keep, uh, keep uh, the backups uh, for a longer time, of course. Uh, in, you can use also incremental backups if you have, don't have enough web space. But uh, what you also need to do, what's very important, is to, uh, to test the backups. So I know a lot of people who are use, uh, creating backups, and they have a lot of backups, thousand backup files, but they cannot create a back, uh, re uh, recover the, from, from their backups. So they are completely useless. So you have to, peri periodically, you have to test your backups for, for functionality. That's very, very important. So I, th I think you heard uh, some months ago the story with GitLab. They, they crashed the database and they couldn't restore, even though they had three mechanism, backup mechanisms in place. So because they never tested the rest restoration process. So always, always create, a, try to restore. You can do it on the local machine, or you can do it on a subdomain, or, or even, okay, subfold I wouldn't use, but um, still, you can, you can just try it out, and if it works, Save this, this backup file archive and close it and in your, in your safe and, and you're good. And if it's possible, uh, you should prefer external backup solutions. What I like to do is more to, uh, because not on the same level, not on the same application level. So if, you're, if you have the possibility to create full backups of the database uh, on, on the file system from, uh, with your hosting company or with, if you have a control panel like Plask, you can create it from there. I, I would prefer this solution because you are not touching, you are not running within the same application that you want to, to store. This is also a big security issue. We will come later to this point. So if it's possible, if it's not possible, if you have a managed uh, account and you don't have SSH access or whatever, or, or from the control panel of your hosting company, you can uh, still use uh, solutions that we have uh, a Kiba backup or easy Joomla backup. So the second rule, very important rule, install updates. So th those rules are very, very important. Always, always, always install updates. Not just the core, ex extensions, templates, everything. Always install updates. And uh, if it comes to security updates, install them immediately. Please don't wait two days, three days, and see oh, whether you can break my website or not. Always install them immediately. And um, of course, you can, you, can do, you can create a copy of your domain, of your website, and try it first there. But, but I think the security is way more important than to have a broken slider or whatever. Six hours. Six hours. So we have, after six hours, we, uh, so there's a text uh, starting after six hours after we release a security update. So if you don't, uh, if you don't update in this time span, uh, the text will, starting, uh, gets, uh, will start and you can get hacked easily. So don't wait too long if, if you know. And um, security lead David Ayadin. Uh, as you know, we, if, if it's really a, a, secure, a severe uh, hack or security flow, we always uh, notify the, uh, the community in bef beforehand. So we also notify that we will update next week, and then you should be ready. So pay attention to, to the tweets, to the, to the Facebook post that, that the official channel is posting, and also the security channel again, really, yeah, to, as well. So always, and, and they are really crucial, very important. But if you have backups, but uh, it's still, it's not an excuse if you don't install updates, so, but you are safe. And, um, and um, second point uh, to this, uh, to this uh, point, uh, uh, if you have extensions, to look whether they support the, the update server functionality, because if you, if you have, uh, there are many extensions out there, still out there, that don't support the, the, the internal mechanism for the update uh, notification. And if you, don't, if you have the, the, the choice, you, would all, you should all, all, always go to with the with a, with a extension with the update server mechanism. And um, because it's, it's real bad, you think you are up to date, but you have an old, very old extension that is not update, uh, were not updated, that does not support the notification itself. And this is, this is not good. So you want to have always the latest version, so, so look in the, in the extension. So if you go to the Joomla extensions directory, you always see on the right side where you, want to, you have to want to download it, there's, there's, there's a notification whether this extension supports the, uh, the update mechanism. So always look for extensions that, that do support this. All right, so another point, and more generic point, so use as few extensions as possible. So this is very important. So I had already nightmares when I had access to some Joomla websites. So 
So I saw 40, 50 extensions installed, and only two or three were used actually on the website. So they just installed everything what they found and just never, never uninstalled it. So always just use what you really need and remove everything what you have that you don't need. Because you will never, never pay attention to these extensions anymore. You won't update them. They will just lie on the file system. And uh, sooner or later, they, they, somebody will find some security issues there. So always uh, remove everything. And also a good possibility, what I always try to do is to solve as much as possible with the core, even though I'm an extensions developer. But still, um, uh, you, can, you can solve many things with template overrides, for instance. You can even uh, in include sliders, whatever you want. You can do it with simple template overrides. It's quite easy. You don't need a special component or a plugin to do small things, to, to achieve small things. And what's also possible, it's not quite hard to write a small plugin. If you need a specific, if you have a specific requirement, uh, you can also write a small plugin or, or get somebody who writes you, but not, not a public one. So you can, you can solve a lot of things with the core. Try to remove, try to, 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 to remove as much as possible um, uh, attack vectors or attack areas. The more you have, the, the more attack, uh, attack areas you have. Two-factor authentication is also very, very important. If you don't use it, try, try to use it. So we have several ways. We have, I also have a YubiKey here. You have a YubiKey here? Can you show it? You have to? Yeah, can, can you put it on? So this is a possible uh, two-factor. It's, we have it's hardware or it's a software. Uh, it, you have two two ways of uh, to secure to have a two-factor. So it's good. It's good. Second factor. So um, so it's a, a second barrier. So if somebody knows your password, it gets uh, I don't know if you, you if you're on the airport and you you, you log into your website and they get your password in clear text, they still cannot log into your website because they don't have the second factor. The second factor is that is only what you have, so only the, the, the thing that you have. So you can use, uh, we have already built in to, uh, two plugins. So we have uh, the software solution, so like Google Authenticator. So you, you, have, you have something on your, an app on your phone, and then you just get a number, a six digit number, and you can just put the number in, and then you can log in with your credentials, of course. Or you have the hardware device, it, it creates automatically a really, really long, uh, really long uh, uh, hash or whatever, whatever this is, and then you can also log in. So try to, if it's possible, try to go for it, and it's not. Of course, it can be frustrated if you don't have the second, if you don't have the device with you, so you can not log in even you know if you know the password. But still, it's a it's a good good way to improve if it works. It's improved the security dramatically. Dramatically. What you also can do is the complexity of passwords. As you know, we have in the in the compo in the user component in the options. If you go to the settings. Uh, you, you have you have you have an area where you can set the complexity of passwords, uh, like uh, the number number of characters, like um, how many how many special characters uh, should be used or should should be uh, in, in the in the password and so on. So try to if you really have an, uh, a registration that you if you have a forum or whatever where, where people should register, uh, set the password complexity at, uh, higher. So um, go for 10, at least 10 characters or something like this. So the higher the complexity, the better it is for you. So don't, don't put it on. So still, we are still, still in the second layer, Joomla, pro, pro backend protection, very important. Uh, always, try, always secure the backend so, so that nobody can just uh, write administrator and uh, see the login, web, uh, login form. Uh, what you can do is, of course, to Use Edge Access if you have an Apache. You can use Edge Access rules, or you can use plugins. So we have plugins, but this is not the recommended way. So if you can go with a server-side uh, protection, you should always prefer the Edge Access protection. Or if you have a control panel from your uh, hosting company, uh, then uh, then use this instead of a plugin that you install additionally. So this is because the problem is if you if you have a security flaw in, in in a file or whatever, so the plugin is not triggered if somebody calls the file directly. The plugin is only triggered if if uh, if you uh, go through the application of Joomla, Joomla application. So this is some kind. It's better than nothing. Uh, but of course, if try to go with the with the server side uh, solution, or you can even uh, you can even just allow access to specific IP addresses or whatever. So j try to limit uh, the access to this administrator f uh, folder and all the files under it. What you can do is to test the integrity of core of the core files. Is uh, like I have a MD5 checksum scanner. If you want to just look at Joomla extensions directly, checksum scanner. 
and you can you can check the integrity. So all other files uh, re are really intact. So are they still the same, the original files, or were they uh, edited or whatever? So change. So this is what you can do. And we also have the possibility to override core, but I, I don't think this will solve that a problem when you get hacked. So this is what you shouldn't do if you get hacked because it will, won't help that much because maybe you have a shell script there or they upload some files. So this, this is not really a, a big help. But what you can do to just uh, for us quick, if you get over or get a new project or you want to have a new customer on there, he, have a, a, he has an exis existing website, you can just do a small MD5 check. What, five minutes left? 10 minutes, oh wow, I have to hurry. I have a uh, no, performance uh, topic. Okay, uh, okay. Okay, I switch over. So if you have a uh, forms, uh, activate, uh, I, I know people hate, and I had uh, captures too, but the no capture is quite, quite good. So you don't see the capture at all, and, but if, if, it's something, if something is uh, not really right, or Google thinks it's not okay, then you will see the, the capture, the visible capture. But uh, suspicious, but and usually you don't see the capture, and it saves you from being attacked. Especially we have the, if you have the option, uh, send email to me to my address itself. So that, that is what bots are ta uh, targeting, uh, because they can send a lot of spam emails through this option. So because they just put all the possible addresses there, and can send e spam emails from your server. This is a, a way to secure. Uh, disable uh, disable user registration. Mark. Yes, I think I think it was already included here, yeah, as far as I know. Not? Okay, uh, you have a pull request tomorrow, please. Yeah. Mark, okay? Six ago, but GitHub. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is a user registration. The good thing is in the latest versions, uh, this is by default deactivated. That's really good. But, um, uh, but in older versions, uh, that was uh, per def uh, by default it was activated. And if you don't need user registration, just, just deactivate it. Check the user rights and remove unneeded user accounts. That's what I talked about uh, previously. So uh, if you don't need, uh, if the user doesn't need any, any access anymore, remove this account. And check the user rights, of course, if they try to set up your SEL settings uh, really as low as possible so they just can do what, what they need to do and not more, and don't have more rights. Oh, I have to hurry. So, and of course, be careful with security extensions. The big problem with this is uh, extensions are running on the same application. If they get hacked or somebody hacks uh, your system over another uh, flow, and then they can manipulate the security extension and they can, res uh, they can display your wrong result and you think you are safe. So it gives you a, gives you a, a wrong feeling of, of security. Try to go uh, another layer, application layer, like um, server-side, mod security rules, firewall rules, something like this. Okay, I have to hurry. Server, mm. keep your server up to date. So operation system, PHP, whatever, what you have. This, of course, if you have a managed contract, it, uh, your, your hosting company will do this. But still, if you, if you can go to a higher PHP version, do it. Uh, set, uh, check the permission rights. Uh, like, for example, configuration PHP does only need read access. You don't need write access on this. Just go through it and you can just uh, check the rights. Uh, user SSL certificate, that's very important, especially if you're, if you're forms, if you're an online shop, wherever the user or your visitor have to input data, it's always it's, it's, it's crucial to have a SSL certificate to go over HTTPS because the channel is secured and encrypted. And I'm too fast, or? It's okay? All right, so this is very important, so, so secure your user. You know, we have the Let's Encrypt. Uh, uh, Let's Encrypt, uh, you, you can get easy and easily and very uh, free as SSL certificates. And CDN, um, it's not bad if you, if you uh, it mitigates uh, like Cloudflare, it's a security proxy, it mitigates uh, like DDoS attacks on your server. If you expect a lot of visitors, it's always very good to have something like this. So they can, they can they have a, they are, they are sitting in front of your server and they can uh, stop uh, bad or malicious uh, requests and also just let the good ones through and they can also cache their the response and, and helps your server to not to use too much resources. Uh, database only internal usage. If you if you if you have an own server, you can you can set up your MySQL database that you it's only only callable from from inside local host and not from external. Uh, firewall rules. What I do also, uh, you can close ports. 
So th there are a lot of bots that are scanning your, your server and try to, to, to open ports. Uh, if you don't have a mail server on the, uh, on the, on the server, you don't need to, you don't need, uh, to open ports for, for mail, SMTP, IMAP, POP3, or whatever. And also block countries. If it's just local, a local uh, shop, you don't have to, to, to have access from China or Russia or whatever. So you can also block countries via the firewall rules. Uh, okay. And also, if you have an own server, always only allow SSH login via SSH keys, never, never through passwords. Because I have some test servers running on, and if I log in one day later or two days later, I have over 100,000 failed login attempts. So there, there's so, there so much, not much traffic, there's so many bad, bad, boy, uh, bad boys out there that try to hack your server. Always uh, do not allow permit every. Okay, for a bit. Performance. Sorry, sorry that I have to speed up. Uh, I have so much to say. <laughs> so uh, when, it, when it comes to performance, I speak about uh, transfer time. If the request started uh, and gets to, gets to your browser, and then uh, the response time from the browser back, uh, from, the, from the server back to the client, to the browser, and also the la latency in between. So we have a delay in the transmission. And of course, the processing speed on the server. So how, how fast can the server respond to, to the request? And you know how that is. Uh, the response uh, uh, will, uh, gets to the server via HTTP, uh, and then uh, the server working, get the data from the database, and blah, 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 uh, creates the HTML output, and sends it back to the, to the server. And this is, of course, very important if you're, if you're, especially if you're on a mobile, mobile network, it's very slow, and you want to have some information data, and you, while you're waiting, you get very frustrated. So it's very important, and you can lose a lot of customers. If you're trying to sell stuff, things, uh, you have an online shop, and the people have to wait for 10 seconds or whatever, so they get very frustrated, they will look for another shop. So the bounce rate will increase. So it's, it's always good to have to, to work on the performance and always tweak and optimize the performance. So the Joomla performance on the Joomla side, uh, also in general, not Joomla related, uh, uh, limit HTTP requests. So the, the less requests you have onto the server, the, the, the faster the website is built or the, the output is built. So what can you do to, re, to, to, to have less HTTP requests? So one HTTP request is always sent to, uh, if you have, uh, uh, if a resource is needed, like a JavaScript file, CSS file, image file, also the HTML, the first request is the HTML file, and then the browser looks, okay, I need five more CSS files, and then requests again the CSS files. So what can you, can you do to improve this? to limit uh, the uh, HTTP requests. One thing is to minify and concatenate the CSS, CSS files, uh, JSS, uh, CSS files. Uh, but um, if you're on HTTP2, this is not that important anymore because uh, there are some, some mechanisms uh, that improve also, that improve the, the transfer and transmission. Uh, also for many files, for many requests, requested so resources. But still, this is a, a good way if you're still running on HTTP 1.1 uh, to continue. So you have, instead of 10 files, you have just one CSS file. So you have just one handshake, you have just one TCP connection request, and you put all the data through one channel to run connection. And it helps a lot. It improves the speed a lot. And the same with CSS files. So you can do it with static files like CSS and JSON. And we have a good, very good uh, plugin that I like to use, it's uh, JCH Optimize, and it does it very, quite good, so very good. So if you're, if you're looking, there's also a free version and a pro version, and I, I have the pro version too, and it's, it's awesome, it's, it works really, really good. This is really easy, this is just one, two steps, but always keep in mind, if you use such tuning pl plugins, uh, they can break your site as well. So if you optimize too, too much, over, over tune it, then uh, it can break your site, so you have to to find the right way, the right optimization possibility. Okay, what you can do is also replace images with icons. Uh, of course, not the images that you see in galleries or whatever. If you have a gallery, you cannot replace the image with icons. But what I often see is uh, I, uh, like uh, menu images or like mo module menu images that, 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 are, that are loaded on every page. Uh, you, can, you, tr you should try to replace them with icons because it's just as, it's really easy to load. You have just one file and then you have all the information and th you don't have to load each, each image. And of course, uh, remove unneeded resources. What, what, this is what I uh, see a lot of times of, of, of many, uh, on many Joomla websites. Uh, they just, uh, there are some, a lot of plugins, extensions uh, that tr lo uh, are loading a lot, a bunch of JSS, CSS files and they are not used. 
at, at all. Or the, 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 even worse is uh, if they just load on every page this, the, the, the files, the static files, but are only used on one page of the website. So, so the, the files are loaded on every page because the, the plugin does not, does not uh, check whether it, is, it has to be triggered on, on this specific page. It just loads on every, every request. And this is very bad. So you have to look whether you really need this file, specific file that, that is loaded, and if not, remove it. So there are also some possibilities. I also have in my, uh, in my uh, extension collection, I also have a plugin to remove on specific sites, specific JSS uh, or, or CSS files. If you want, you can ask me. I can show you how it works. Quite easy, but it helps you a lot. Also the same, we had the same with uh, the, the switch from MooTools to jQuery. So MooTools was always loaded and, and you, you didn't need it anymore. Uh, most people didn't need it anymore, but it was still loaded. So compression, use compression. Uh, so the browser has to support the algorithm like JZIP, the ED flat. But in, in the request, uh, in the header, in the header of the request, uh, it says what algorithms are supported. And then the, the, the server can decide, okay, I will compress the files, send it very, then, then you have a big data, a big, big package, and it will be very, way smaller. And then it will be sent to the, to the client, and the client has to decompress it, and then uh, shows the information. So it helps you a lot to, 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 to have uh, a very, uh, way faster transmission time. Compression, but it's standard. It's, it's, it's standard nowadays. So everybody's using compression. Uh, one word to compression, I almost forgot. If you use the compression in the global settings, global configuration, you know we have the, the global, uh, in the global configuration, we have an option, uh, use compression or whatever. Uh, then only the HTML output, the first request will be compressed because it goes to the, to the application, to the Joomla application, and the, this, this uh, can be compressed. Uh, this, the output will be compressed. But uh, if you just use this setting, this option, uh, your JavaScript files, your CSS files won't be, uh, won't be compressed. So you have to do some, some more things, like in the edge access, some directives, uh, that you want to compress uh, images as well, uh, J JavaScript files as well, and, and so on, and icons as well, whatever. So um, you can just uh, Google it, and then you see what you can type in and what you can use. Uh, using cache, that will increase the performance in sing uh, significantly. It's very, very important. So we have several ways to cache. So you know we have the glo in the global configuration to cache uh, some, some parts of the website, but we have also the plugin, the plugin to cache uh, the complete output. So on further requests, you don't have, you don't have to load, or the, or the system Joomla has, does not have to load to do all the database queries, because the output is already there. So we have the static file. And, um, and uh, on another request with the same parameters, it can just uh, send the static file directly back to, back to the browser. So it will, it will proce the process time will be way, way, way smaller. So it helps a lot. And um, I also improved it a little bit. So I also have a plugin that uh, do, does the same with, the, with the, like the page, uh, page cache. But uh, you can also store already the, the files, the, the information uh, JZIPed, compressed. So, so the server does not to compress them on a request uh, again. Uh, it can send the compressed file back. So it's, it's a way to, it's also a possibility to improve it a little bit. And optimize mobile output. I'm not talking about uh, responsive websites. I, I think everybody already has a responsive website by now. Uh, what you can do, because the main problem with the responsive thing, with a uh, bootstrap or whatever, so um, the problem is you just hide the information. You, you, you load the complete data, but you hide it via CSS like display none. And this is not good, because if you're on a mobile device, and, and you have a big slider with 10 images, you still have to, to load the slider on the mobile device, and then it is, it is uh, removed from, from, the disk, from, the, from, 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 the, from the view. And this is not good because you still have the, 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 the latency or the, the data that has to be transferred. What is better, and there's, a, there's another solution, another possibility is to, to filter on the server side. So filter on the server. So the good thing is uh, all normal browsers uh, transfer a user agent in the, in the header. And with the user agent, there's, there's a free library available. You can, you can, you can, de you can decide or you can, you can specify uh, what device is calling, uh, is doing the request. So is it a mobile, uh, is it a smartphone, is it a tablet, is it a desktop? And from, from, with this information, you can, you can decide what should you show, what should you send back to the, to the, to the, to the uh, client, the, the request, the, do the request. And I also have a, I also have a plugin for this, device-specific content. And uh, I included the free library, external library, and, and then you can just specify, if you have a slider, you can, sh you can write, 
in, in your template or, where, or a module where you include it, uh, is mobile, then show. If not mobile, then show nothing. And this will help a lot. So you don't have to load a slide. Or if you have a sidebar with, with hundreds or uh, 10 Im uh, images, whatever, why, why should I load them if I don't show them on the, on the mobile device? So this will, I, I, had a, I had a project, and we had a big problem with mobile devices. And this, is, this was the best solution. And it was really fast, and it helps a lot. So if you are interested, device-specific content is the name of my plugin. Just take a look. It's, well, it's quite easy to integrate. You do it once, and it works. All right, so and remove errors. Uh, so if you're done, you, you're configured everything, uh, it runs, go to the browser console, open it, and uh, look whether, whether some errors are shown. So JavaScript errors, most of the time, if you concatenate, if you to overdo the tweaking parts, you will find something. Or if you have uh, a loading of non-existing files like images or like if the template uh, tries to, to load uh, an icon or something, uh, remove the, part, the, inclu inclusion, uh, the includes uh, in, in the code so that the, 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 the files are not requested anymore because it's just an uh, un, 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 unneed request and it tries to get it and then it gets an uh, error response. This is bad. So try to remove and look whether you have errors and, and limit, uh, remove the errors. Server side. So this is one, one uh, this also I think the, the Victor's Golden Rules. Tweet about it. And the other thing is really important. You can forget everything, but this one you shouldn't forget. PHP 7. Go, it, there's no reason not to switch immediately, now, yet now here, uh, to PHP 7. So that will, uh, why? So the reason is why? So you have uh, over 2% faster processing speed of the, of the PHP code, and you see four times less memory usage. So it will increase and it will make it, your, your server more responsible, it makes it faster, everything, your user will be happy, just switch to PHP 7. And if you have things running, you have an old extension that is not ready yet for PHP 7, then you should, you should look for an alternative. Because if it's not ready yet for now, now by now, then it's not really, they don't really care. The developers for, don't really care about the extension anymore. So go and try uh, and switch to PHP 7. This is the best tip uh, because this is, uh, it, it's the easiest, easiest way to improve the performance. And like uh, low-hanging fruits uh, with the most influence, so go for it. But you, there's, there are other options, of course. Uh, so you can cache control. You can use cache control in the configuration file like Edge Access. You can say, okay, uh, those files should be cached by the browser, by the local, local storage for two weeks or one week. So if the browser rec needs this file, it looks first in the, in the, in the local storage and then if it's, it's outdated, it will request uh, the file again, or it will just use the local storage. So, so on, on, on con uh, recurring uh, requests, so if they, have, if they visit your website, so go to, to other pages of the website, they don't have to request all the, the files all the time again. So they just use the cache files on the browser, in the browser. So this is also not, not, quite, not easy, uh, not hard to, to, to add, to activate. HTTP2, if it's possible, if you can activate it, or if, you, if your hosting company provides it, go to HTTP2. Uh, this will increase the transmission time by around about 10%. This is the new version of the HTTP protocol. So you, you know 1.1, of course. So this is the standard that was the standard for years. And now we have the HTTP2. And there are a lot of improvements to, 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 for, for performance, like uh, the, the channel is open, by uh, the, the, the data is transferred binary and not textual. And we have multiplexing. Uh, you can also have one TCP connection and have parallel, uh, parallel transmissions. And also uh, a smarter server. So the server can decide, OK, I will push, push the data that will be requested next. Because the server knows if, if, if the HTML output is sent back uh, and the next files are JavaScript files or CSS files, then the client will request the, those files or these files. So the, the server already knows it, and he can proactively push, us, push the files already. So it's a good way to improve uh, the, the, the performance, the transmission time. All right, uh, what you can do is also using Nginx as, as a proxy, or even a standalone. It depends how you, how you configure it, if you're able to configure it, because it's quite performant, way per, more performant than uh, Apache. You can use it, use it as a proxy, what I'm actually doing. So uh, my static files are all delivered by Nginx. Uh, only the, the normal request to the application, to the Joomla application itself, uh, goes, uh, go, uh, go to, the, to, the, to Apache. And also, you can use the reverse caching. So it has also some caching mechanisms that will help you to improve the, the performance. 
uh, using CDN, of course, uh, like we have a lot of, there are a lot of out there, Max CDN, Key CDN, and of course, if, um, it makes more sense if you have more international visitors. So if they are in Japan or whatever Asia, so they will get all the static files from a from a server nearby. So they don't have to wait till till it goes to to Italy or, or Germany and then send back uh, the information. So they will they will they will the distribution is better. So they will get the static files uh, from a low, from from a nearby server and yeah, it's way way faster of course. And. Use on the cloud server, use an on server, because you, you, you will have the freedom to adjust, to tweak as many as, as much as possible. So you don't have to, you are not dependent on, the, on, the, on your hosting company, on the, on the package that you have on the contract, because you have all the freedom if you have an on server. But of course, I know it's not that easy. So, yeah. But it's, there are ways to, to use. So if you're, you're interested, I can show you something. You can come to the booth. I can show you also our software uh, that helps you to manage and keep your server secure. And, uh, but it requires, of course, a little bit of knowledge or the right tools to do it. And if you want to test your performance, test the performance, the changes, uh, there are some tools out there. I don't have a slide for this. So PageSpeed, like from Google, Google PageSpeed, where you can check uh, what you can improve. So it gives you some hints what you can do. Uh, like web page test, ping DOM, JT Matrix. So there are a lot of tools out there to, that do the request to the server and and, and test your, the performance of your server. So uh, I'm to, yeah I'm done. So do we have? <laughs> thank you. And thank you for listening and have fun optimizing your websites. <clears throat> Any questions? Sorry. Wait a second here. Yeah. That everybody, that it's recorded. Where can we get a copy of the presentation? The copy? Yeah. Should I share the slides, you mean? The slideshow, yes. Uh, okay, I can share the slides, but uh, I'm don't, I don't know where. I can, put, I can tweet it. You know my Twitter handle, Victor Vogel? Yeah. Okay, I, I will tweet the slides later. I will upload them to slideshow. Hi, Victor. Thank okay. you for the presentation. Well, you. One question about caching, because caching is quite, uh, can be quite confusing. In the general configuration, you have caching options. But if you activate the uh, page cache plugin, yeah. do you, does the general configuration cache still play a role since the cache plugin caches no, no, the no. whole page? I, uh, no, it doesn't play a role because if you have the first request, if you don't have cached anything, uh, it doesn't matter because you still have all the same, same things to do, the database, database queries or whatever. So I wouldn't use both solutions. I would just go for one and not, not to interfere them. Yeah. So deactivate the global ones, but just use the patch cache. If you are not satisfied, if you have dynamic content like, like, a, like a count or whatever on it, then maybe it's better to go with a, with a yeah. not so strict cache. Maybe we should make it clear in Joomla that you'd better use one or the other, because there are some presentations explaining all the caches, but you never have a hint of uh, do mm -hmm. this or do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in the, in the comments of the back end when you hover or Yeah, whatever, I know what you mean, I know what you mean. It's, it's quite abstract. I don't so. know, do we have a good documentation, no documentation for this? No, not really. Yeah, we'll find a way. But if you're, if you're going with the plugin, you don't need uh, the global cache yeah, okay. because it doesn't make sense because yeah. it's cache anyway, the complete output. So why, why should you activate the other cache mechanism? You're the first person in the world able to tell me that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm waiting for the tweets. <laughs>